texting or or uh, you know talking about things that that they that they've seen uh, online. Um, uh, they're uh, keeping it in the family again. I have a, a uh, nephew who is backpacking uh, all over the world, and we're following him, following him on Twitter or, or uh, uh, Facebook or this little geo application that uh, we know where he's at <laughs> at any time. He's posting pictures. We're getting to experience where he's going without having to be there. To which many of us may never ever get that opportunity to, to go to those places, but uh, and and we're able to say, hey, while you're there, do this, <laughs> and, and send him things that he can act upon uh, 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 immediately. Uh, local community information. Uh, th this population has been used to reading the paper. I mean, they still get the paper, they still uh, read it. However, more and more relevant community information for them is now online. Um, here in uh, uh, Chicago, with the with the relaunch of Every Block uh, recently, and if you haven't been on that, I'd encourage you to, to go out there and, and yeah, it, and, you know, find that zip code or two or three uh, that you're interested in and get that you know little daily uh, email, see what's going on. Um, it's even helpful for for us from a business perspective, not just knowing what's going on in the community, but then there's events that, that go on. They say, hey, that's cool. Maybe we can support that event. Or, or engage with that that uh, uh, event, um, but the, those types of things are, are becoming more prevalent and uh, in, in, in more um, uh, timely than reading about it tomorrow. <laughs> you can see or read about it today, and how does that? Uh, how do they engage with, with, with that again without uh, uh, impacting that information overload? Um, we talked about it a little bit before the delivery and access to basic services, which we talked. Um, a little bit before, this population is social. They want to go to they want to go to the driver's license <laughs> station. You know, it's getting them out of the house. You know, it's 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 going uh, somewhere. Most of us would rather do that online. Uh, they want to go to to uh, uh, you know the doctor's office. They want to do their shopping uh, in, in person. It's a social. Uh, event. Those things are social events for, for them. Again, just getting them out of the house, something to do. Uh, uh, however, um, as more and more of those basic services are done online and there's no people to go see, that's, a, that's an impact uh, uh, on, on this population. Again, we talked about safety and, and information uh, uh, security. Again, this is the, the, the social impact is trust. I mentioned trust before. It's a very trusting uh, population and they want to trust, but their trust gets violated, in, in, and it's a, it's just a social impact uh, for the, for this population when they've pressed the button to clear up that that virus, and, and you know something nasty has happened to them, or or they've responded to the email, and all of a sudden you know something uh, uh, has occurred to them that violates that that trust, and they, and they become more untrusting than in in our social environment. And, and again, health healthcare. Uh, uh, most of, 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 of seniors in this population receiving health care don't always have a support system around them. Uh, they're engaging in, in uh, health care maybe on their own or with their, their spouse that's aging as, as well. So uh, it's, it's a social impact on them when they don't have the support of the practitioner where they're going to the practitioner and, and engaging with the, the practitioner um, there. That there, There's a social impact uh, on them uh, uh, there. It's, it's different. Uh, I'll uh, address my, my father again. He's developed a, uh, a little bit of a heart condition. And um, uh, for us, we are engaging with him every day. Hey, have you been have you been taking that medication? Have you taken your blood pressure uh, uh, and so forth? Because you've got a doctor's appointment next week. Others that don't have that support system around them, you know, and, and there's not someone uh, that they're engaging with, they may start to fall off of uh, uh, engaging with proper health health care, whether it's information or or uh, uh, direct services that they should uh, engage with, because. The, the social nature is, is is being diminished by having to do things on your own uh, it, with technology. <clears throat> Some of the programs and support that we provide for, for seniors, biggest number one is going to them. Um, 
we would get people that would come to us that would say, boy, I'd really love it if my spouse or my friend or neighbor could engage with them. They can't get out of the house or they can't get out of the, they can't come. Um, there's, there's something they either don't have transportation or, or you know, the weather as we've been having is, is not safe for them to get out uh, 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 and engage with, with us. So going to them, uh, for example, uh, uh, at Constitution House in, in Aurora, um, oh gosh, about 900 seniors in, in that, that community there. Um, it's a low income population, uh, but it's a, a retirement uh, community for them. It's a high rise uh, type of, of place. Uh, when we went to them, we got so much more engagement of people that were in that 5% that would didn't think it was relevant, or, or I guess 95% <laughs> that didn't think the technology was relevant to them, but now their friend was coming and it was right there in their building and there was somebody there that was going to help them and, and, uh, and talk with them and then it became a social type of event. You know, it, it was just like all the other social things on their calendars. You know, it, it, everybody wanted to come or they, they you had more uptake in, in uh, uh, the programming. We were able to reach many more uh, uh, folks by, by going to them. And with today's technology, it, um, it, it was very inexpensive to take it to them. You know, 25 uh, laptop computers and a, and a couple of uh, air cards and, and we were up and running with, with great connectivity and, and uh, uh, serving folks real, real quickly. Um, one of the other things we see that that's a, a big issue is dexterity and the need for assistive technologies. And assistive technologies come in a number of different forms in, in today's world, but, but as we age, whether it's our eyesight or, or whether it's, it's our, our uh, 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 ability to, to grab the mouse or keyboard, uh, dexterity is a real issue when you're trying to click on that little button that says you don't want your email address given to everybody else in the world or you don't want to receive uh, information, trying to get to that is, is difficult. Um, and uh, uh, so helping folks with other techno assistive technologies that, that help with that dexterity or, or other assistive technologies that make the things larger and more readable um, uh, uh, to folks. Uh, basic internet and social media usage. And when I say basic, it's not teaching people at a very small level. It's taking the social uh, networking or, or internet and scaling it down, getting rid of that noise that I talked about before, that, that, that information overload, so that they're, they're comfortable with engaging with it and getting right to what's, what's important to them, finding what, what they need or, or uh, uh, not having to sift through tons and tons of, of other things that, that aren't relevant to them, uh, helping them figure out how to do that uh, uh, there. Uh, smartphones and, and other digital devices. Um, again, we really haven't talked about you know how to how to use the keyboard or the mouse or th that type of thing. Um, that has become less and less important, and it's other things that that are are more important, like how to how to engage with that smartphone. Again, if all that stuff that's on, like when I when I turn my uh, my smartphone on here, um, besides all the messages that I've missed, um, I get all these boxes all over my, my phone, um, helping them to get that just to the two or three, <laughs> I want to call somebody and I want to text. And, and, and you know, helping them to get it to that so it's easy for them, helping them to get the size uh, uh, larger so they can read it, helping them with the, the, the audio. And, and people with hearing aids, when they put that up to their ear, if they haven't adjusted their hearing aid, it goes <laughs> Uh, which is irritating for them and also those that are around. So helping them to recognize, uh, okay, your phone's ringing, you're going to have to uh, um, engage with that, turn the hearing aid down, <laughs> and, and, and turn the phone up, uh, those, those types of things. Other digital devices, uh, cameras anymore, they don't just point and click. Remember, remember the old point and click, right? Um, that's how uh, this, this age population used cameras. There wasn't all of these, well, I'm going to set it to, to uh, sun uh, environment, and I'm going to do a panoramic, and I'm going to have it do uh, 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 you know, the, the, the 10 photos all, all together at, at once, or I'm going to turn it to movie, all, all of that type of, of things they didn't have before. Now they have them, and they're all little teeny-weeny icons on, the, uh, on the, the device. And so 
how do I engage with that? How do I use that? How do I how do I upload? Hey, I <laughs> my dad has taken tons of pictures with his with his phone. You, all he all he can do is you know show it to the next person. He he, he still hasn't grasped the concept of uploading those and being able to share those with email or or, or other media. Um, and, and you know I I use my family a lot. I love them to death, but I don't want to use anybody else because I've got tons of examples of of that as well. So other digital devices, how to engage uh, with those safety and information security. Again, you've heard me say this. Now three times, right? In three different ways, programming that we put together to to help seniors understand that you can be trusting without having your your trust violated, and in recognizing when to trust, when not to trust, uh, what information is important to keep secure that you don't send to someone who sent you an email claiming to be your grandson that's stuck somewhere and needs some money. Would you, you know? Would you wire me <laughs> uh, some money? Uh, types of things. Healthcare and other public uh, uh, social services uh, programming around again, uh, helping folks to find uh, information uh, quickly. How to find it relevantly? Um, uh, what are trusted sources and what aren't? Uh, just because Wikipedia says something and it's been edited ten or, or twelve times doesn't necessarily mean that that's the the good source. Wikipedia is a great source, but Maybe there's other authoritative sources to go to, um, like we went to Pew, Re uh, Pew Research to get some, some research, an authoritative uh, source. Um, and there. Uh, phone support, they want to talk to somebody. They don't want to email you. They don't want to chat with you. <laughs> they want to talk to you. So if they, if, if they have a problem or issue, making phone support available to them uh, is is important and, and Ray I think you would agree most of the phone calls we get are not the young folks <laughs> it, 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 that are in our programs it, it's the older folks that that want to talk to somebody and, and want to be able to get their their question asked and, and answered uh, that way so from a programming perspective these are the things that we've seen that are, are important to, uh, to this generation some of the things that we see as as coming up looking ahead here the connected home, and this goes to uh, tying back to what Brad was talking about, um, broadband in the home that is going to connect everything, that, that's going to connect the appliances, that's going to connect the, the medical equipment, uh, that's going to connect the, the home security, uh, that's going to connect to the communication, whether that's um, smartphone, uh, tablet, computer, or otherwise, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the life alert types of, 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 of things, um, and helping to, to wean the population off the landlines. Uh, is, is you all know, landlines are going the way of, of other uh, obsolete te technologies and, and moving to uh, the mobile and connected home. And then how does that connected home follow you? So when you leave the home, you still have that implant that is given the vital signs, right? So how does that continue when you move on outside of the home? And how do you... Uh, uh, teach the the, uh, uh, the senior uh, population to engage with that technology, use that technology, troubleshoot the technology uh, themselves. Whether it's uh, you know needing uh, power, you know battery charge, whatever, how, you know, or, or any other issues. How do you, how do you troubleshoot that? Uh, you know the connected home, and then how does that connected home follow you? Um, the, the home and personal uh, monitoring is, is becoming bigger and, and bigger as more and more homes have uh, some type of, of um, uh, connection cable and you know you have the cable companies uh, providing home security now as well through that cable uh, uh, connection as, as well. Um, uh, as personal monitoring again the, the fall and I can't get up uh, and then how does that follow you out, outside of the home, uh, where, wherever you go? Um, healthcare house calls. Um, we are now seeing more and more uh, geriatric uh, uh, doctors that are making house calls either virtually or physically to, to patients as opposed to patients coming to them. Um, and in particular with uh, retirement communities where they're now going and, and either having a small uh, uh, office, doctor's office there to do the routine types of things, um, uh, uh, whether it's, it's just uh, uh, physically seeing someone or some of the routine testing 
that, that can be done right uh, in, in these smaller uh, offices in the retirement communities or coming to the, the home uh, where, where the individual is at home because they can bring their everything they need. Remember, they're coming to you with a computer. Now when you see them in their office, they just pick that computer up now and come to you. And, and it's, it, for them, it's less costly. They can actually, they can actually get more uh, reimbursement um, if, if they're doing these types of things uh, 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 in the home setting as opposed to in a, in a healthcare setting, uh, they can get more reimbursement for that. They can improve the, the, the health of the individual because they're catching things sooner um, uh, uh, than they may have caught otherwise. Uh, so we're seeing more and more of these, these uh, uh, healthcare professionals going back to the old house call, whether again, whether it's physical or virtual. Um, and, and so what does that mean for us from a program uh, perspective or, or a technology support uh, perspective? Um, market opportunity is, is the last thing. And, and uh, market opportunity comes in, in, in a couple of ways. One is, is from a, a social policy or, or a programming perspective. What are the market opportunities that, that we see here? Kind of going back to some of the questions uh, that, that Brad left us with. What are some of these market opportunities here from a, a social public sector uh, uh, policy and programming, as well as from a commercial standpoint. Um, a huge, it's going to be a huge, as, as uh, Brad pointed out in, in his statistics, and as you see in our uh, statistics from the pre Pew research, this population is growing. What's the market opportunity uh, for us within our, within our own organizations, either, again, uh, 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 public or for not-for-profit sector or the private sector, uh, whether that's programming or whether that's products and services, um, as, as, that popu as the population, me, <laughs> as I move in and, and I'm engaging with all sorts of, of technology now, what does that mean for, for uh, market opportunities, either services that, that I could access or products and services I might be purchasing? Um, and again, this population is coming into uh, the, the, the 50-plus with money. And, and, it's a, and the technologies are affordable now. And the means of delivering products and services are less costly. You know, you can sell it on Amazon, or, or if they can access uh, your, your service uh, over, the, over the internet. Um, you start to, the cost of entering into this market are, are very small as, as well. So uh, uh, that's uh, my information. And uh, uh, here we are um, uh, as well. If you want to contact uh, us, we, we'd uh, love to talk to you afterwards. But uh, we'll turn it over to Dan and, and any questions and answers. Wow. Okay, so yeah, they did uh, go together uh, pretty good. So, um, Brad, I think you, you, so you had your, your questions, and I think that um, uh, Greg, you answered a lot of them, right? So maybe going back to those questions might be a good way to kick off our discussion. And while I'm doing that, we have another way to kick off our discussion. Anybody have questions, comments? points. Yes. One of the things um, from a quality of life perspective that has been occurring in my little family is we've got too much screen time and not enough intergenerational conversation. And so part of my concern is how do we, can we figure out a way to use technology to get more to the intergenerational conversation and less on screen time? 